In 1888, the Grand Army of the Republic, an organization made up of Civil War veterans, asked the Iowa legislature to place a monument on the Capitol grounds to honor Iowa's Civil War soldiers. The legislature appointed a six-member commission. This commission advertised for monument designs to be submitted before April 2, 1889. Forty-eight plans were submitted. The design by Harriet Ketchum from Mount Pleasant, Iowa, won the competition. Ketchum's design was criticized, and she revised the design before her death in October of 1890. The 24th General Assembly approved Ketchum's design in 1892, and Carl Rawl Smith was hired in 1894 to carry out Ketchum's design. The design for the monument was impressive not only because of its size and detail, but also the number of bronze sculptures included in the plan. The base includes equestrian statues of Generals Marcellus M. Crocker, Grenville M. Dodge, Samuel R. Curtis, and John M. Corse. There are also statues representing the infantry, cavalry, artillery, and navy. Round portrait sculptures represent many Iowans prominent in the war. There are also two Bas relief sculptures, one representing Iowa at Fort Donelson and the other titled Homecoming. The 23rd General Assembly appropriated $5,000 for preliminary work on the monument. The 24th General Assembly determined the monument must be placed at the southwest corner of 10th and Walnut that the center of the monument should stand at what was the center of the old brick capital. The 24th General Assembly contributed $150,000 of refunded war taxes to the project. Schreiker and Rodler of Davenport, Iowa were contracted for the architectural work. Westmore, Morse and Company Quarry provided the Vermont stone. American Bronze Company of Chicago provided the casting and placing for all the bronze work. Robert Finkbein, a capital commissioner and the superintendent of capital construction, was appointed superintendent of construction for the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. The uppermost statue, Victory, was placed on the monument on September 25, 1895. The monument was to be completed in early 1896, but the bronze work delayed the completion until much later in the year. There were controversies concerning the placement of the monument and the bronze figures designed by Rawl Smith. These controversies delayed the dedication until 1945. Extensive restoration took place during the late 1990s. The bronze statues were cleaned using a sandblasting unit at 25 to 30 pounds per square inch of pressure and pulverized walnut shells were used to remove the surface grime. At the time, this technique was used by the airline industry to clean jet engines. The monument again underwent rehabilitation in the mid-2000s. This included stone patching, stone replication and resetting, and stone cleaning and repointing of the entire base of the structure. This latest bronze conservation project on the monument statues initiated by the Iowa Department of Administrative Services took place from June 23rd through June 30th, 2021. Performing restoration on the Soldiers and Sailors Monument requires a great team and a lot of logistics to access these parts that are very hard to reach. Um, we decided to go with a 150 foot boom lift to access the Victory statue at the top of the column and we decided to go with a JLG 86 foot reach boom lift to access the horsemen and the lower figures. The first step in the process was mobilization. That meant the lifts arrived on site and we had to meticulously place them in a way where the trajectory of the arms would accurately reach every area that we needed. The boom lifts are operated from the basket. So with two people in a basket, it's engaged to where you can operate everything and reach every height that you need to. The thing about the Victory statue is we needed to use three different positions to access every bit. 
We started on the sidewalk and started with one side of her and then moved around back. The process of restoring Victory was to ensure that the current patina was stable. Luckily the bronze is in fantastic condition. The green patina that's developed over time is very stable and there's no active corrosion or anything harming the actual integrity of the bronze. We went with a UV inhibiting stain and sealant to resaturate the Victory statue to resemble what its intended appearance was, which was more likely a dark chocolate black bronze typical of the lower figures. The goal was to unify everything so that when standing at Vantage, everything makes sense, everything looks like it goes together as the artist intended. The product application involved making a, the mixture of our patina solution and applying it via sponge, via brush, and a variety of other tools to get in all the nooks and crannies of Victory. It's very scary being up at that height and it's definitely not for the faint of heart. So while working up there, we need to make sure our work is meticulous and covering every bit of detail. At the same time, being aware that we're 150 feet in the air. During our restoration of Victory, we had to bring the lift down several times, adjust the arm, and then bring it back up so we could properly reach. Every inch down below in the rotation of the lift means several feet when you're at that height, so we have to be very precise with that placement. The lower lift was a bit easier because working at that height, it's easier to move the lift in and out. It's a little more limber and slightly more user-friendly. The lower lift is a lot easier to use since we are accessing lower pieces. The lower bronze figures from the horsemen down have all had maintenance on them, so they're all in fairly good condition. However, there's a lot of blue-green corrosion and blue-green patina that's starting to redevelop. The horse figures had been lacquered previously, so we performed a wax sealant coating after cleaning all of the pieces. The lower figures all involved cleaning, heating of the bronze surfaces to evacuate moisture, open up the pores of the bronze, and then the wax solution can be applied on the bronze, allowing it to saturate and soak in. After the bronze is cool, we then do our manual buffing using brushes and uh, cloths to make sure that the luster is really prominently displayed. The other thing about the wax coating, it acts as a natural UV inhibitor and a water repellent. So these figures now, all the lower figures and Victory will be well protected. Another challenge of this project has been battling weather. Uh, being that high on a boom lift, we have to be in constant uh, awareness of wind, moisture, oncoming storms, there were moments when we had to bring the lift down because we had too much wind um, and we had rain delays which we couldn't do anything. Uh, all in all, this project has been extremely rewarding. It has been very difficult, but we believe that we have helped preserve the legacy of the Soldiers and Sailors Monument and that uh, anyone that sees it now will be able to appreciate the beauty of this monument.